Hello there and welcome along to Hive Live Extra, your place for exclusive reaction and analysis following Watford's 2-0 defeat at home to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Here with me in the studio to talk through the game, the former Hornets striker Tommy Mooney. Um, Tommy, the winning home run of course coming to an end on what was ultimately a bit of a frustrating afternoon. Yeah, it definitely was. Obviously you want to take that momentum into the home game and and see the sort of performance we had against Aston Villa. But it probably took us 20 minutes to get into the game today. And then by half time, we were probably disappointed not to, to go in with a 1 0 lead. I think the fans were quite excited by the 11 that Cisco went for, certainly when the T news broke. Where did it go wrong, though, today? You mentioned there we did take a little while to grow into the game, but other than the first goal, of course, where did it start to go slightly pear shaped for you? I think we allowed them to have comfortable possession. And then as the game went on, we got on the front foot a little bit and started to attack them, created some good opportunities. Ismail Assar got in down the right-hand side and he, he just wanted to, to grab the, the game by the scruff of, scruff of its neck, really, and say you know, to, to Wolves, you know, we're in this game and we can, we can compete with you. Um, and when we did that, when we played with a little bit of pace and power and went a bit more direct, I thought we looked the better team for, for a quite a large spell. But then when you allow Wolves to get on the ball with possession they've got some real good quality in possession of the ball and then the the second half they're, they're fully dominated mm. uh, more detailed analysis on the way and we'll be taking a look at some of the individual performances as well but for now let's take a look at some of the highlights <laughs> Well, just looking back at some of the highlights there, Tommy, there were some promising moments from Watford, particularly in that first half. I think when we picked the pace up and, and really tried to get in behind them, Ismail Asar had a couple of good opportunities, which when he looked back, he'd probably be a little bit disappointed. He probably caught in too many minds whether to, to take a shot or to cross the ball, and in the end, it was neither. So disappointing, but also you have to look at the positives and say Europe, Europe has been a, a, a place where Wolves have been aspiring to get to when they get to that then they want to go on further in the Premier League so this is a, a well-established Premier League team and we were comfortable at times we just didn't have that killer touch and and, and create opportunities to take the lead mm. if we'd taken the lead I, I genuinely believe we'd have taken that momentum and gone on because we, we were really tearing them apart at, at times for you then really was it fine margins because there'll be people that look at this and think that's three games now what would have gone in the Premier League without scoring yeah, I mean, we didn't create clean-cut chances, yet we were on the front foot and we had that power and pace of, of, of Dennis and, and Ismail Assar. I, I think it's just that, that final touch in, in the final third, in and around the box. Perhaps not enough numbers in the box when the, when the crosses come in. I think that's an area that starts to concern me a little bit, that there's only one person in the box when a cross comes in. You need more than that to be successful and, and 
improve your ratio of chances to goals. Unfortunately for Watford, um, and it, it was Wolves that got that breakthrough. What do you think Ciarlta was trying to do there? It's, it's hard really to say, isn't it? I think he's, he's unlucky to a certain extent because there's two other Watford players that it's gone over their heads. I'm not sure he, he's seen it until it was too late. Um, he'll be disappointed with his body shape that it, it hasn't hit his head and gone wide of the, the goal. But, you know, it's one of those things. It's a good ball in the box. The irony is all of the Wolves players were behind him and nobody was was there to tap it in the net. So a little bit disappointing. But again, that's if you give them the opportunity with set pieces around the box, that's, that's what's going to happen. And for the second goal, is there anything we could have done a little bit better, maybe? I actually think it's really good skill from Pedence. When he come on, he looked yeah, lively. Yeah. Um, and it was a really, we'd say he stood the ball up to the far post and that's that's what happened. And Gakia couldn't get his head on it and it's come back in. And goal scorers survive in the middle of the middle of the goals and he just tapped it in. It was By the time Backman got his hands on it, it was well over the line. Let's try and pick out some positives. Dan Backman being one of them for Watford. Thought he made a fabulous save in, in the first half from Semedo. Um, and then in the second half, never made the save, but it was right in line with where we were watching the game. And you could see he covered the goal because he came out and was so big. I thought he was he, he was he looked comfortable comfortable and confident, probably on the back of more um, international call-ups and, and being with that group. But I thought Danny Rose looked look strong and organised today, he used his Premier League experience and was at times comfortable against Traore, um, who obviously has got the pace and power, but, but Rose managed him well. Um, and Sissoko was getting forward more than anybody else mm. and creating chances. So I don't think, for me, those are the three positives of the day. Yeah, you mentioned there Danny Rose and actually the fullbacks generally had a, had a pretty good day. I suppose now it's about how you really try and use that in and really create something out of possession in the next game. Yeah, and I think... Um, and Gakia would have learned more in that opening 20 minutes playing against <laughs> Adama Traore than, than he would in, in many games to come. But uh, I, I think it's more a case of, yes, you, you're in the team as a defender, but you've also got to attack as well in those in those wide areas. And, and Danny Rose put a couple of crosses in. Not sure Ngak Ngakia was as positive going forward, perhaps though he was concerned about defending against Traore. Mm. Uh, more from Tommy in a moment or two, but now we can head pitch side at Vicarage Rose from, for some exclusive post-match reaction here on Hive Live Extra. Jeremy, uh, commiserations, obviously 2-0 defeat this mm. afternoon. Uh, what are your thoughts and the, the rest of the squad after that? Uh, I thought this game could have gone different, 100%. If that first goal doesn't go in, it could be a total different game. Well, unluck it was a very lucky goal as well. And then we just need to keep our heads up and stick together and hopefully good times will come. Yeah, obviously the two goals are quite unfortunate to concede, but um, you know, look from where we were sitting, that you know it's avoidable things. You know, not too much to work on. Are there a lot of positives to take from that? Yeah, there's definitely positives to take from that. But as a team, we know we can do better, and we need to score goals. That's the main thing. That's how you win games. We need to score goals. Um, some really good chances, especially in the first half. You know, would that have been a turning point? Do you think if you could have got over the line and got one of the goals in the yeah, in the first definitely. Half? Whoever scores first really gives them the momentum, and it's a total different game. So, if that first goal goes in, whoever scores the first goal really to get the upper upper hand. So, yeah. And um, for yourself, um, obviously a, a good battle there with Adama Traore. How much did you enjoy that this afternoon? Yeah, it's a very very good um, experience for me because obviously I like playing against top players makes me better myself, so it was, it was a great day. There's been a lot of turnover in the squad uh, over the summer and obviously the international breaks just finished, so is, is it going to be nice now to really sort of settle in and get to know everyone and, and with those positives look ahead now? Yeah, I'm excited to be with the new lads, uh, the, the whole new team, I'm excited for this journey. Yeah, and um, just finally on, on Vicarage Road as well, you know, full today, uh, second game here this season, how much did you and the rest of the boys enjoy that despite the, the defeat? Yeah, this is the second time I've got to be in front of the whole full stadium, so it's a, it's a great feeling, unbelievable. Um, obviously a big game next weekend um, against Norwich away. Um, how much are you and the rest of the boys looking at that now as a chance to really bounce back? Yeah, it's a big chance to bounce back. Every, every game is a chance to bounce back, so we need to just keep our heads and stick together and then things will go, go, things will go well. Well, I suppose looking ahead now, Tommy, it is still relatively early in the season, but do you think the pressure's just gone up? A little notch or two ahead of the next couple of games in particular? Yeah, 
in the Premier League, the pressure levels are always high. But I think it, with, with the opportunity to go to, to Norwich, two teams that were promoted to the Premier League and played against each other last season, it's a big game. I don't subscribe to the relegation six-pointer one. I think it's just the two promoted teams battling off against each other. And on the back of a couple of disappointing results and performances, it's important to go to Norwich and, and impress and then set up a good week ahead. Mm. Yeah, what's been your biggest takeaway from these recent defeats going into that Norwich game? I think today the game was there for us to take. Mm. If we just got on the front foot a little bit earlier and been more decisive in front of goal. And then away at Tottenham last week, we weren't massively outdone. I thought there were spells in the game where we were the better team and we coped well with the football. So on paper, you'd say... Wolves and Tottenham, you're not going to have an awful lot of possession, you're not going to create chances and you're going to find it tough. Well, we did find it tough, but we did have possession and we did stand up against them. Um, so I think those, those are the positives you take from two defeats, really. Mm. OK, uh, we'll leave it there for now here on Hive Live Extra. So thank you, Tommy. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to having you with us next weekend for that game away at Carrow Road as Watford will be taking on Norwich. So do keep an eye out uh, on the club's social media channels and YouTube as well for coverage around that game. We'll see you soon. Click here for more videos.